Hello everybody and welcome back to another hobby cheating video and part two of Desert Bases. The re-deserting. Uh, so <clears throat> here we go. Base is all dry and primed. Um, I gave it a light dry brush <clears throat> of some ivory from uh, Pro Acryl real quick. And now we're going to turn it into a desert base. And you can see how I think once everything you, you bring it together, I think it really sells the, you know, the effect. We've got what looks like some heavier scree down here at the bottom of a slope. I should have said that, but that's in the original one, but that's why I placed that, the heavier rocks there to show that they had sort of slid down the hill. Um, we have some very light texturing. We have some heavier sand. You know, I think it looks good. The skull is sort of half buried, as is the shield. All right. We got a desert here. We're about, we're, we're about to. So now it's time to paint it. <clears throat> so we want to talk about desert colors. And we're just going to we're just going to dry palette this bad boy. Uh, for this, we're going to use a couple different colors. We are going to use some Seraphim Sepia from Citadel. We're going to use some Golden Brown from Vallejo Model Air. And some Golden Brown from Pro Acryl. And I would just like to, if there's ever any proof that paint names are just made up, the fact that these two have the same name is so funny to me. Um, I mean, they are. They are both, in fact, Golden Browns. It's not a lie in either case. It's just, that should show how the range of things go. Uh, we're also going to use said ivory, uh, and maybe, maybe, we'll just use a little tiny bit of yellow ochre, but that'll be later. <clears throat> so, let's start at the beginning. Um, we're going to lay down our desert colors. Now, I have this over zenithal, so we're going to work a little thin, but not crazy thin. So, we're going to take some of that golden brown, <laughs> the, the darker golden brown, then we're going to take some of the other golden brown, you know, lots of all the, we got all the golden browns for this one. And we're going to grab a nice big brush. Make sure it's wet. And then we're just going to get in here. We're going to grab the base. And I'm going to think about my color placement and just start stabbing this bad boy. And then I'm going to get some water. And I'm just going to literally spread the the color out to the other areas. Up here where I want it to be brighter and down here. So you notice I'm actually keeping like a, I'm actually sort of turning it into a glaze to vary the intensity on the surface, right? And I'm just working quick and wet. Let's go back to that. Just kind of trying to work where I'd have shadows with the darker color and where I would have uh, lighter colors with the lighter color. Now, then I'm gonna take some of my ivory and really bring up some of the bright areas. Get the edge of the sand. Get some of those edges. By the way, I'm just, I'm just, I have a paper towel right off camera here and just as usual, we're working fast and wet and just getting water, moving it around. I see a lot of people often afraid to sort of push paint around on the miniature. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is lose that fear. Push paint around on your miniatures. You're not going to hurt anything. Like eventually you'll pull paint up and you'll eventually get a sense of like how far you can push it. But seriously, one of the easiest tricks to blending is just to paint on the miniature more. I see a lot of people with challenges of like blending and if they would just paint more on the miniature, sort of either in a two brush blending or uh, even like aggressive dry brushing, you can you can get away with it. So there's lots of options. All right. So now we have it all colored. There we go. Let's work some of that in there. We just, we want to get rid of any any sort of you know 
uh, dark grays or blacks or anything like that because that just it doesn't belong in the desert. One of the <clears throat> challenges of working in like a desert scheme is that there's not a huge amount of color variance, right? Like the reality is when you're working in a pretty sandy environment, the sand gets everywhere. It's so rough and coarse, it just gets everywhere. Um, <clears throat> is that it, it tends to color everything like sand. Um, so you kind of have to be aware of that. Uh, I'm also, while we're just, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my ivory and reinforce the, just some areas of the skull real quick. There we go. Just so that stands out as nice and bright. I'm not going to worry about the shield at the moment. I'm going to grab a couple of these rocks. I could get these with dry brushing, but since I have this on the edge of my brush, I'll just tap a few of them. Speckle some in there. Okay. Great. And there we go. So, now, our next step, once we have all of our, our tones laid in here, so you can see we've got some nice variants, right? Where we've got the different color brown showing. Um, our next goal is just going to be to sort of bring this all together. And then we're going to pop it back up a little more. And you'll see how we work with the tones to get a nice desert palette. So, our next goal or our next step is to bring in the Seraphim Sepia. So we're just going to give it a good wash. Uh, I'm going to do this off camera since it's going to take a minute to dry. It's just a wash. I'm going to apply it like a wash. I'm going to dip my paintbrush in there and wash the thing. If you want to really see what I mean, I mean I'm going to get the brush wet and then get in the wash and start doing that just like that. And then I'm going to do that over everything. It's, you know, applying a wash. So I'm going to put that on there and then let it dry and I will be back in just a moment. All right, we're back. Wash is dry. You can see we're much darker now. So now we're to something that looks a little bit more like, like almost dirt. So we're gonna lighten it back up. And we're gonna do that in a couple different steps. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back to some of our previous paint. So I'm gonna grab some of the deeper brown and just kind of smooth it around here on some of the spots. I'm not gonna move much. I'm just getting it out there more to have it. Where we really go is we go into our lighter golden brown and I want to start building up those areas again that should have some light, right? And then again, get my brush wet, wipe it off, and then I just start smoothing out the edges some. Pushing that paint around, getting that transition nice and even. <clears throat> Do the same thing with the ivory. Here we want to be very purposeful though because we're we're not trying to make this a bone white desert, right? So again, then we wet down the brush and we just kind of push the previous wet layer into this one. So now what we get is these nice transitions. Now you notice that I basically ran a little bit of the wash up onto the skull and because I had already put that highlight on there it's basically done. Boom. Skull complete. Right? Easy peasy. So now now we're starting to feel a little more deserty. So then we want to let all that dry Okay, which will happen here as I describe what I'm going to do next, because that wasn't very thick paint. So, <clears throat> obviously we need to paint the shield. I'm just going to put some base colors on that real quick so it looks like something. Um, but I'll, I'll use this to, I want to talk about, I'm just going to grab some, well I would grab it here if the paint would come out. Um, I'm going to grab some blue-green from Vallejo, uh, just because this is a great color for sort of the turquoise of Tomb Kings type stuff. And it will also serve as a fun time for the, what I'm gonna talk about. So when you have elements that are in a scene like a desert, right? Okay, really? It The whole thing has to feel 
bleached. Everything here is sun-baked, right? What this means is that, thank you, is that we don't want any really intense colors. Anything highly saturated is gonna read as, as incorrect, right? Because the environment itself, first of all, the sand is blowing across everything, it's scraping everything up, it's constantly um, weathering everything and stuff like that. So to that end, we don't wanna sit here and take some of our just initial blue green and kind of can run it across there. All right. And now we have a color, but that's like, that is really bright. Like that is going to super stand out, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a bright element on your base, especially if there were um, other, you know, sorts of elements or something on here that I wanted to, to, um, to tie it in with, right? If the miniature up top had some of that color, that could be okay, but it's not gonna feel very deserty, is my point, right? So I'm gonna take a little bit of white onto my, or just a little bit of my ivory onto my dry brush. Really, really, really wipe that down. And then we're just going to give it a light touch with the dry brush just to catch some of those rocks. Okay. Just real super duper light touch. Sorry, I realized I got a little too much light in frame there. There we go. Okay. And if you want it to be a little bit brighter, you can go a little bit brighter, right? Like it's it's whatever you want. So if you want it to be a little bit more on the realm of a uh, of very white sand, because I mean, again, sand has lots of different colors, depends on what it's made from, like sea coral versus, uh, you know, other things that break down and make up sand. It's just wind, you know, air and stuff over time, breaking things down. Okay, so I mentioned a while ago that we, uh, we have our yellow ochre here. If you want a little bit more yellow in your desert, one of the last things you can do is take a nice yellow ochre. You don't want to use actual yellow paint. It has to be something like a yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a much more desaturated yellow. It's not like a lemon yellow. We're going to take a little bit of that and we're going to just thin it way, way down here. And then what I can do is just very lightly come in and in some of the off highlights. So I'm not pushing it directly onto the highlight. I'm just pushing it kind of right into that first mid-tone layer there. I can just get kind of that yellow around there and it gives that slight feeling of a little bit more of a, you know, sort of deserty feel. Because we just get this warmer, sunny tone to everything, which obviously we want, right? Things need to feel warm, yellow, like they're being cast in a, a sunny light. You can see how it just adds some of that warmth around there, <clears throat> which is great. You can also do a light glaze of it onto like the side of the skull here, just to Make that feel like it's got a little bit of that in there. Nice and easy. Does it every time. So we just kind of push a little bit of that around. And then we get just that nice little yellow hint of the idea that there's yellow light here. And you can see how we've actually achieved quite a lot of variance in the, in the desert with very little actual like color movement, right? Like, and that's the key. Um, we're not trying to go to blacks here. We have a lot of, of interesting contrast without the need to run all over the place to things that are very bright or very dark. Okay. All right. So if you have metal elements here, these probably need to be worn. Um, like I would do this in copper and oxide it out. 
Uh, I'm not going to do the metals and stuff like that here on camera. I'll do it when I put it in the final picture, but I mean, if you've, you've seen me do battle damage videos before. Uh, but I do want to talk about how to weather stuff like this. So when we're talking about elements like here, right, this, the shield itself, that's where we're going to go back to that ivory we had earlier. Grab a little bit of that yellow and mix it in there so we have that, we have kind of a white-yellow mixture. And what we want to start doing is we're going to go ahead and just start very lightly I'm going to stipple the shield. As you can see, I'm just like, just running my brush like a little typewriter. Just have a hint of that yellow in there. It's mostly the ivory, but just a hint of that yellow. So it has the sense of warmth. Okay, and what I'm trying to do there is basically get a bunch of little scratches and hashes and dots and stuff like that to screw this up. To show like wear and tear and sandblast and stuff like that. Then I go back to my blue green, but I thin it way, 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 way down. And I'm just going to glaze over that. And what I get when I glaze over it, some of those dots were still wet, and that's okay. It moved them around, some still remain. What I get is this really nice desaturated color, right? And because it's got the yellow in there, I can even push it a little more to where we really start showing that this thing has been bleached and sand baked and is just most of its color has been washed out of it. Hopefully that shows up. In reality, it's got the using a little bit of the yellow is important because not really because like it's actually that there's yellow in it, but the light would be very yellow and the light would be capturing that sun baked portion. Right. So by desaturating out this bright blue green through the introduction of this ivory with just a hint of the, the yellow in it, the yellow ochre, what we get is something that feels much more like it's actually been out here exposed to the elements. Now, the other things you can do is obviously you can do things like scratch it up. You can do little, you know, hashes or dashes or stuff like that, like literal cuts in it um, <clears throat> and stuff like that. So you can also just use your traditional battle damage and that's fine. But when you're doing this like sort of sun-baked nature, what you're, what you're trying to accomplish is basically working in this like light white yellow into in a pretty random pattern because if you've ever seen like a car that's been completely sun baked like where its paint job's gone it's very spotty right it doesn't have this like sort of natural battle damage like thing where it scratches in it it just has this like almost where it's been slowly faded out and there's lots of little dots and organic patterns in it and stuff like that so that's what we're trying to replicate at this smaller scale with the uh, with the stippling. So now, instead of being that super bright blue, it's still there, but we have it very much desaturated. Now, at the same time, you can do anything you want as far as, like, you can come in and kind of pick out some of these rocks again. If you want some of them to be a little brighter, you can do that directly through some more aggressive dry brushing, anything like that. You can get those final details in there if you want to catch a little bit of those things. But... So you can have those kind of stand out or you can bring them more in line by doing a touch of that and then with a very thin version of one of your previous colors you just kind of go back over it and it'll they'll stand out as brighter but still very much in tone just little touches like that kind of decide how the overall thing feels so there you go that's basically doing a desert base. Um, the key with the painting of it is again just to just to cover our, all our bases. 
is you want to be playing in the light browns and ivories, um, you know, things like that. You want to have a, a range of colors without being too high contrast. The desert has sort of bleached everything, and you want to capture that. A little bit of yellow ochre glazed in at the end can add a nice um, desert feel to everything. So don't be afraid to, to get in there and, uh, and add some of that at the end. Uh, you want to get rid of your, your sort of blacks and grays, things that are going to read as more blue um, to the eye because we want everything to be warm. Your whites and anything like that you use should always be like an ivory or something that is um, something that is very warm in tone because you want everything to feel like it's it's sun baked, it's you know exposed, and everything should have a very warm tone to it. Avoid like really strong, striking, bright colors on your basing elements if you can, um, because you don't want them to be look saturated and new. You don't want elements that are half buried in the sand to look very saturated and new. They should look sun bleached and warm and, and uh, sorry, and worn out over time. So there you go. That's your desert base. I'm gonna finish up the edge of my little pattern here with just uh, some slight oxidation and uh, paint the edge of it. And I'll post a pic here in a moment, but there you go. That's all done. That's how you paint up a desert base. So I certainly hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to pop that down in the comments. If you'd like to come take a class with me, you can check down there I, in, the, in the description. I have links to everywhere I'm teaching in the US and the UK this year. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one.